Hi, FossTube friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chris. Today is Friday, March the 31st, 2023, and I'm here with my month-end wrap-up um, regarding my stitching for the month of March. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, if you're new, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, uh, welcome back. It's always great to visit with you guys and have an opportunity to talk about something that I am passionate about and that brings me so much joy. So um, let's get started. Uh, March has been a pretty busy month for me. I have got quite a bit of stitching to share with you today. Um, I was lucky enough this month to uh, be able to go away for a weekend with some of my friends. So I was able to do um, some stitching when I was hanging out with them. So that was great and we had a wonderful time. Hi guys, I love you all. Um, so I'm going to just jump right in. So let's start with my uh, focus projects. My first focus project is uh, in the category I'm calling small. And um, this actually is a series that I'm working through. It's the Year in Chalk series by Hands On Design. The last one that I was working on that you would have seen was um, for the month of December, Peace on Earth. I will put a picture up here of what it looked like when you would have last seen it. And I have been able to finish it. So these are all stitched on the called for Weeks Dye Works gun metal uh, linen. I'm doing it on a 32 count. Uh, I did start out using the uh, called for Gentle Arts chalk for the white but I quickly ran out of that because I wasn't thinking I only bought one skein, but it really, there really isn't any variegation or anything in it. So I have just uh, gone actually to B5200. I thought it looked closer to B5200 than to white, like or blanc. So that is what I have switched to uh, for some of these. And I believe, I can't even remember where now, part of this is with the chalk and part is with B5200. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see if there's a big difference or not, but so, and then, uh, the colors, so each one just has one color. And if I had the called for, um, hand dyed floss, I would use it. And if I didn't, I would just pick another, either hand dyed or even a DMC that I thought was close to what the models were stitched with. So, so that is December. So then I moved on to, sorry, Molly just took a drink and he thought he'd sniff my stitching. So, uh, so then I moved on to January, let it snow, and I was able to finish January. So there's that one. Holly. He's licking, <laughs> licking some of the charts. <laughs> uh, I never work with animals, they say. Uh, so then I moved on to February. You hold my heart. I changed this one up a tiny bit. So I'm using a different pink because I didn't have that pink. And if you notice, I don't know if you can see, but on the model, they did a backstitch line of pink right in here, and I didn't think it needed that. I thought that was gonna to be too much pink. I also, they had these little pink dots there, which again, that just seemed like an odd spot. So I just cut back a little bit on the pink because I thought there was lots of pink on there. So that is February. Um, so, the, those are all the ones that I finished. So on April 1st, which is tomorrow, I come back to this one. And so I'm going to be working on March. May luck be yours. So looking forward to getting back to those. I'm finding working on the projects for a week is great and I am getting good progress. And I have to be honest, I often don't want to put them down at the end of the week because I think about the fact that I'm not going to see them for another month. 
but then when I come back around to them, I'm really excited to get back to them. So this seems to be working so far for me. So my next category is my medium category. And if you'll remember, I was working on um, the silk stitching app Christmas Sal from 2020 called Shooting Star. So here's a picture of the model or the mock-up. And um, I'm doing mine on black. So here's where it would have been the last time that you saw it. And here it is. Da, 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 da. So here it is now, it's finished. Yay! So you can't see, there is sparkle in those gold stars because I put a strand of DMC gold light effects in with the gold floss. So in person there is definitely a sparkle there. So, so yeah, so there's a finish. Yay! <laughs> Always feels good. There. Happy finishes everyone. So because I have finished that one, I am now going to my next oldest whip in that category, which happens to be stallion. So here's what it'll look like when it's done. And this is going to be my starting point. And I'll talk more about it next month when I get some progress on it, but that's where I'll be starting from. So the next category is the medium large and in this one I am working on Christmas Village. So here's a photo of what it will look like when it's done. And here's a photo of where it was the last time that you would have seen it. And I am stitching this on, I believe it's a 28 count lamb's wool linen. Um, with all of the called for flosses, which are all DMC. So it's a big chart. Or sorry, a big piece. So it's six pages. So there's page one, two, three, Four, and I'm working on five and I'm actually very close to five so I'm just working on that large house there in the center I actually completed this little house since last month a little bit more of the snow in there I finished off the little poncetia plant there and then I'm working on the house and all the snow around it so I might be a little bit optimistic, but I am going to work on this later today. And I'd like to try and get a page finish, but that might be a little unrealistic, but we'll see how it goes. Check in next, next month and see how I did. So that's getting close. So I just have to finish that page and then I have one more page left and then I will be done. And that's a big project that's been in my whip pile for a long time. So that's going to feel good to get that one done. Um, and then I have my large focus project, which is uh, behind the bit. So here's what it'll look like when it's finished. And here's where it was the last time you saw it. I am stitching this on an 18 count oatmeal Ada with all of the called for DMC. And I haven't got a whole lot more done, but I got a bit done from the last time that you saw it. So it's looking good and it's coming along. Hopefully when it comes back around the rotation, I can focus a little bit more and get more of it done. But I'm still really enjoying stitching on it. Even though it's large and even though I've been stitching on it for quite a long time, this now is my, my oldest whip that I've had on the go. So those are my four focus projects. They each get a week. Um, so the other uh, project that I'm working on is my uh, temperature cell. Um, it's a pattern by Apricot 
polka dot from Etsy and I'll link their website or their Etsy shop down below. Here's kind of like a sample of what it will look like. I think she calls it mini hearts. And I may, I'll, if I have a picture of where it was the last time you saw it, it's just a bunch of hearts, but I'll put it in, I'll put it in here if I have one. Um, but here is where it is now. So this is caught up. I usually work on this on Sundays, but I actually, um, I worked on it last weekend, but I only had the temperatures up until about, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. So that was as far as I had anyway. So this Sunday, I'll just catch up the few days I think that I was missing. So yeah, so like the greener, lighter colors are the warmer days. Those purpley ones are the really, really cold days. And then the blue ones are like the colder days. So we should start warming up to start seeing more greens and yellows, hopefully. Hopefully someday soon. So the other thing that I've been doing is um, I've kind of copied my friend Barb, hi Barb, and I'm doing um, a Sunday stitch or a Sunday spin where, um, so yeah, so on Sundays I'm working on my temperatures chart and then I'm picking a random whip either using my whip wheel or just if there's something that's sort of been calling to me or something that I want to play with, I will pull that out on the Sunday and stitch on it. So. So the first Sunday in March, I spun the wheel and the project that came up was Whip It by Awesome Pattern, Pattern Studio. Um, so here is a picture of what it will look like when it's done. I am stitching mine on a 28 count mystery linen, linen. I know the name because the name was on the tag is Time, but I don't know who the dyer is. Um, here's a picture of where it was the last time you would have seen it. And here is where it is now. Look at his eyes now. So that looks cool. So yeah, so you can see that I have done a color conversion. The original was done with a lot of pinks and purples, which looks beautiful, but not a color palette that I decorate with and I want to hang this up in my home. So I convert it to more natural colors, grays and browns and tans. I kept all of like the highlights and lowlights, I believe the same because I didn't want to mess with the shading. But then I changed out those pinks and purples for grays and browns type of thing. So I worked on that the first weekend in March and I worked on it um, last weekend when I was away with my friends for a little bit as well. So it got a little, uh, quite a few stitches put in. The second weekend in March, I decided I wanted to work on my walk with dog, my Leonid Afromov piece from Artisy. Um, I'll put a picture here of what it will look like when it's finished. And I'll put a picture here of where it was the last time you would have seen it. So I decided I wanted to work on this because I'm just, I've just started playing around with different ways to do full coverage, right? Because there's no right or wrong way and there's all different types of things. So because this project is quite large and has a lot of confetti, I thought I wanted to try kind of color completing within a column and within a page kind of. Uh, because I thought that would be much quicker, which of course it is, right? Because you're not constantly changing your, your threads. You're not constantly having to re-thread your needle sort of thing. Um, and I was enjoying it initially, but then I quickly remembered why years ago I sort of stopped color completing on full coverages because as you get more and more stitches, you're starting to stuff stitches in um, tiny spots. Kind of like I talked about with the skyline temperature cell that I had started but wasn't enjoying stitching on because that's what was happening with it trying to fit stitches in between other stitches um, and then the other thing I found well, let me just show you so here's where I got I didn't do very much I sort of 
I sort of did um, like a little bit at the bottom of this column and then I came up here and you can see when I came up here I went back to what I normally do when I um, do full coverage and if anybody's curious and wants to know more details let me know and I can share more of that in the future in another video but so yeah so I was sort of color completing and this is on to the next page but I wanted to finish thread so I just kept going down the column until it finished um and don't mind this this is a mark from a clip that I was using one time but that'll be stitched over because it's all full coverage um so it was fun you know being able to see the branches and the trunk of the tree coming in here but as I say as I got down towards the bottom of this I was cramming stitches in and I don't know well you can kind of see in here this yellow area like the stitches are quite distorted and also what was happening was because of all the threads going down to these ones that were getting carried behind here like in behind here is really really thick as well um, it seems I don't know why it would be different than over here but it is so I did not like how that was looking um, so that's why I went back up here and went back to what I did before I'm still undecided I don't I don't think I'm gonna pull this out, you know, there's like, I don't know, 75,000 stitches or something in this piece, at least. And, you know, this is a, a group of what, 200 stitches. So I think for, I, I think I'll probably just end up leaving it, but I'll, I'll see. I'm gonna keep stitching and if it's still bothering me down the road, I'm not above taking it out and redoing that section if I have to but but yeah so that's where I'm at with it I what I did enjoy working on it and I'm kind of looking ahead as I'm working on uh, my behind the bit that when it's finished this will be the next large project that I work on so I am looking forward to really seeing some progress on this and seeing some of the colors come together because it is just beautiful so so that was the second weekend in March. Um, the third weekend in March, I actually decided to make myself another pair of felted slippers. Um, if you remember uh, in the past, I had shown you a pair that my a friend of mine had knitted me as a gift and you knit them quite large. Um, I'll actually put a picture in here of the new one the new slippers that I knitted. I, I had laid them out next to the old ones that were already felted and you can see the difference in size so when you knit them the the slippers are way bigger than a person's foot but then you put them in the washing machine and the agitation felts the wool together and they get smaller and smaller and you just have to sort of do it for a bit take it out check the sizing put it in again take it out check the sizing sort of thing so I decided I want to make myself another pair because um, those original ones, as often happens, the sole is starting to wear through. And I figured if I was going to buy some more yarn to darn that sole and refelt it, I might as well buy enough yarn, make myself another pair, and then I kind of can switch back and forth, or if one needs to be repaired, I can wear the other one, sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so um, so yeah, so that was the picture. So you sort of saw. I'll put. I think I have a picture of the two of them with Ollie so I'll put that picture in so there they were both um, stitched and then I felt them and uh, so here is what they look like felted so my others are blue these ones are kind of like shades of brown and yeah they're super comfy cozy they're starting to get a little bit fuzzy and they get hair the pet hair and stuff you know will sort of stick to the bottom and sometimes it will weave its way in so it's just another fiber there and you're you know adding to your slipper or the stability of your slipper so um so yeah so I'm really enjoying those they um they're nice and comfy and cozy and uh I just really enjoy wearing them they're nice because you can just leave them on if you throw a blanket over top of you and um I can wear them with socks I can wear them in bare feet and they're great and yeah if they start to stretch out a little bit or they get dirty you can just throw them in the washing machine you just have to be careful how much you agitate them and even if they do get a little bit small you can stretch the wool the wool out if it's still wet kind of thing so so that was my my Sunday stitch for for that weekend so um 
So then the last weekend in March last weekend was when I was away with my friends and did some stitching. So um, there were a couple of other projects. So I did mention I worked on Whip It while I was there. I did do a little bit on Behind the Bit while I was there. I worked on my temperature cell a little bit. And then I wanted to work on um, my mini farm scene, I guess I'm calling it. That's the series I've got out of this little book. Many more minis. Georgia. Sorry, I can't, I'm, I'm not sure the correct pronunciation of that. Hernandez. Um, she has some really beautiful little patterns. Her shading is just gorgeous. But um, so I was doing these little farm scenes. So um, you can see winter is right there. And I had done spring. So I'm going to switch winter out and put spring in later today. And I had done autumn. So the one I had left was summer. So I started and finished it last Friday when I was stitching with my friends. I did stay up quite late because I really wanted to finish it that day. They are close, like they're 28 by 30 stitches, so they're almost 900 stitches. So that's that's a big chunk of stitching, even though it's a tiny little thing. Right, like here's my hand. They're like um, two, three quarter inches or so, I think, square, approximately square, <laughs> not quite. So yeah, so that's been a fun little series and I just really enjoy them. I have them in that little frame sitting next to my stitching spot. They're by the clock. So anytime I look over to check the time, I see the little picture and I don't know, it just makes me happy. Just looks like a little place you'd like to go and go for a walk or hang out kind of thing, so. So the last thing that I have, the last stitching I have to share with you was I do, wanted to do a new start when I was away for the weekend. Um, so my friend Kim and I, hi Kim. We had been talking and we both uh, have some tellum, tellum emblem patterns and we decided to do a start along. Uh, so we both happen to have this cardinal from the Birdies and Berries series and we agreed that we would start that this past weekend. So Kim has posted her progress on Instagram. Kim actually started, um, I believe she maybe started with this border, but her latest picture, she has the cardinal finished. I decided to start on the border and save the cardinal. That's my, uh, that's my motivation to get all of the other stuff done that might not be as much fun to stitch, but <laughs> actually this is really fun to stitch. And I have to admit, like these colors, I'm like looking at the colors going, this is so odd. These are odd colors to put together. But once you get them all together, it actually looks very cool. So I can't wait to actually get to the cardinal, but I'm gonna make myself do all the outside work first. So yeah, so that's my start along, Kim. So that was fun. Thanks for doing that with me, Kim. He's gonna go in my whip pile for now. Um, he might come up as a random spin or I might just choose to do him as a Sunday stitch. Um, but Kim, let me know uh, if you finish yours or if you decide to start another one because I could always start another one, <laughs> another one with you. So. so that is all of the stitching that um, I have done in the month of March. So I think that was pretty good. Um, I'm really thrilled that I had um, the finish. Happy finishes. And I'm looking forward to moving on to another um, medium-sized whip, um, the Stallion one, and getting some progress on it as well. So um, I do have a couple of other things I was going to share. I don't really have an Etsy shop sneak peek this month because I haven't been doing a whole lot of showing, sewing, but I do have one thing that I've made for myself that may or may not end up being something that I sell in my shop um, that I'm gonna share. I don't have a any fun finds on Instagram this month. I just didn't get around to doing that. 
But I do have um, a little bit of haul that I've been accumulating in the last little while, um, charts basically, that I thought I would share with you if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so if you're not interested in haul or you don't wanna see what I've been sewing, um, that is it as far as stitching. I guess I, I'll just quickly mention plans, which are basically gonna be keep doing what I'm gonna, what I've been doing. So I'm gonna keep working on my four focus projects. I'm gonna do the temperature cell on Sundays, and then I'm going to work on one of my other whips, whether it's a random spin or just something that's calling to me that I feel like working on that day. So that is it as far as stitching goes. Um, but if you're curious to see the charts I've been accumulating, or um, if you wanna see my stitching, then stick around. So, um, so I have a few charts. Some are haul and some are stitchy kindness. So. I'm gonna start with the Stitchy Kindness. I mentioned my friend Barb. Um, we have become friends through Instagram and um, here on YouTube. And um, we've passed the stash a little bit between each other. And uh, Barb just recently sent me a few charts. Uh, she's so sweet and so kind. And I really, really appreciate that generosity. So. So here's one of the ones that she sent me. This is from Gita's. Inuk and Nanook. Cute. Adorable. And then she sent me this Jeanette Douglas. Take time to quilt. And I think this is, I think there's one for each season. So this is the autumn one. So it's got a bunch of specialty stitches because Jeanette Douglas likes specialty, likes to incorporate specialty stitches into her patterns. I've never stitched one of hers, but I've admired them for a long time and I have wanted to. I just haven't gotten around to deciding what I wanted to uh, stitch. So when Barb reached out to me and said that she had finished with this one and would I be interested in stitching it, I said, oh, I've been wanting to stitch one of hers and that would be wonderful um so she sent this along to me and of course she can't just she didn't just send one she sent that little one that i just showed you in a, another one so she also included her leftover threads which are i believe silks right barb and some um metallics that are used in the pattern i haven't looked at all the details but i, I believe these are silks but so that is going into my stash. And then the other one she sent me, Barb. This was so kind of you. I love Blackbird design patterns. I have not stitched a Blackbird design. Again, it's another designer that I admire and appreciate and enjoy seeing everybody that is stitching them, but I've never stitched one myself. So this is the one that I believe was to celebrate traditional stitches, uh, 20th anniversary, I think. So that is going into my stash. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mom. Um, so some of the other ones I've been collecting uh, is through some of the, well, one particular D stash site on Facebook and I tend to be drawn to things I haven't seen before or things that are out of print um, or they're just not mainstream things that you see all the time so one of them that I found was this um, based on the artwork of John Clayton and if you'll remember I have another piece the hard frost one that I did as my New Year's Eve start it's the horse in the field that was artwork by John Clayton. So I believe there's this series, I think they just call it Elegance, um, the whole series. And so there's a number of um, charts of just these elegant ladies. So somebody was de-stashing this one and I don't know, I just, I really like the artwork and um, sort of the softness of it. And uh, I thought I'm, I'm gonna add that to my stash. Maybe I'll stitch it someday. Uh, there are a number of other ones like, on the back here, it's just showing these three, but there are more than that. I've seen more when I went online to look to see what else there is. I kind of like this one, too. Um, 
my one daughter has blonde hair, very blue eyes, and my other daughter has dark hair. So I was thinking, gee, maybe that would be a nod to my two girls. Um, I also, somebody was getting rid of this one, I think it was like $2 or something. Um, because it is always nice to have some alphabets to add to things if you want to add some words or you want to add something to the back, uh, you know, a year and a date, that sort of thing. So I thought I would pick that up. Um, then I have this um, Mosey and Me. It's called Veggies. It's a cute little rabbit. There's some specialty stitches in this one as well. So you may have seen, I know Pam from Pam and Steph just keeps stitching. Um, I think she has a few Mosey and Me charts. And um, I believe Frank is the designer. And Frank was actually the interior designer that was on the show Trading Spaces many, many years ago, if anybody's familiar with that show. So they have done some designs or worked together to make these designs. And so yeah, I just thought that bunny was cute. Um, another one, speaking of Pam from Pam and Steph. Pam, not too long ago, finished this guy. Patches. Christmas patches. And I just thought it was beautiful. And I saw somebody was de-stashing this one. And I said, I would like that. So he came to my house. Um, another one I was enabled through a floss tuber. This is this a mid Amish life? So Brian or Blitz Stitch was stitching this. It's a triptych, so there's three. And he stitched all three of them together. And again, I just really liked the look of it and thought when somebody was passing it along that maybe I would scoop it up and put it in my stash because maybe someday I might want to stitch that one. Um, so you know me in a series. So I found these um, in an Etsy shop. Fizz Pop Quilts is the name of the Etsy shop. I'll link it down below. And I believe um, she said somewhere I don't, uh, on her site or maybe in a message to me, but she, I believe, often goes to estate sales and buys, I think, leftover supplies. But um, so she had for sale on her site this series. I've never heard, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I've never heard of this designer, but um, it's these seasonal charts. And I just thought it was a really cool concept how there's like this outer border picture and then this inner picture. And again, they're just very pastoral and serene to me and peaceful and pretty. So that's summer. That's spring. autumn and I really liked she was like she sold them as a badge because it would have been I think sad if somebody just took one and then <laughs> you know me you need the whole series so and winter so those are in the pile to be stitched someday um, another one that I got off of there is this Lenarte, Lenart, Lenarte chart, Stony Creek, Girls with Bicycles. And again, I just really love this art style, this sort of soft, ethereal, kind of faded out. And again, just sort of brought back memories of being a kid and riding bikes, you know, with my friends. Again, it's two girls, which just reminds me of my two daughters. I just love that they're barefoot and their pretty dresses. I know, it's just, it's just 
very pretty. So I do hope to stitch that someday. Uh, my friend Nicole knows that I like horses and stitching horses. So when she was at um, retreat last year, she found this on the freebie table and said, hey, do you want me to send this to you? And I'm going, sure. <laughs> so I have some more horses that I could do. And there are some really like, this one reminds me of the book, Misty of Chincoteague. I really like this, The Mare of Foal. My sister has a Palomino. This is quite striking. So yeah, lots of good stuff there. Thank you, Nicole. Um, and then recently, a friend of mine um, that I used to work with, she was de-stashing a whole bunch of stuff. She She's a long-time crafter, multi-crafter, does a lot of crafts. Um, and yeah, she had like three bags, uh, three tote bags full of old charts, patterns, magazines of, wasn't all cross-stitch. Some was knitting, some was sewing. Um, a lot of it, like she does a lot of embroidery work as well as cross-stitch. But I found a few gems in there. So um, one of the ones I found was this one. And I specifically got it. I love the look on this cat's face. And I really like this kitten and the effect of the light behind it. And it's a little fur standing up on end. So I would like to stitch those someday. There's that cat a little bigger. Sometimes it can be hit or miss with cats. Some of them look good, some of them look funny. And then I was thrilled to find out that my friend had some prairie schoolers in her collection. So Santa and Snowmen. Kit kit kit. A prairie year. Oh look, a series. And prairie birds. So, as I said, I've kind of been accumulating those for a little while. So I just thought, since I didn't have um, the fun finds, those are fun finds, just not on Instagram. So, so yeah, if you have any questions about any of those, feel free to ask me. So, um. So I also thought um, I would share with you some sewing that I've been doing recently. Uh, as I say, I haven't been doing a lot of sewing for my shop, although I'm gonna get back to that next week. But I did want to try out, uh, I've seen a number of people doing project folders, which I feel are a little bit like a version of what I call my project bag portfolio, which is the double project bag with the handle and I put a zipper in the gusset and you could zip things in and out, whether it was another project bag or a floss organizer. But I wanted to try these folders because they're a little more compact and they don't have the handles and they have the foam stabilizer in them. So they're, they're nice and sturdy and bulky. So I used um, Elizabeth and can stitch. I used her tutorial that she has on her YouTube channel and I'll link her down below uh, and tried making a project folder following her instructions. So here it is. So it is approximately the size of a standard project bag. Like it's about 13 and a half to 14 inches this way from here to here. And then here to here is about 10 and a half to 11. So our, what I call a standard vinyl front project bag is um, 11, and a high, 11, 11 and a quarter high and 13 wide. So it's pretty close to that. So it has the foam stabilizer in it to make it nice and thick. And, um, and then I quilted this fabric on it. Liz did hers with a foam stabilizer that had an adhesive so you could iron your fabric on it so you didn't have to worry about it shifting. I can definitely see the advantage to that. Mine does not have that, the stuff that I just had on hand. It's a sew-in one, so you can sort of see like the, the fabric probably shifted a little bit so it's not quite as smooth as I would like it to be. But. And this is really cool because it's a magnetic clasp. And Liz shows you how to, how to do that. And then when you open it up, I didn't, oops. So there's a zipper. 
pardon me, technical difficulties. Let me just fix this for a minute. So, there's the zipper pocket on this side, where I've got some of my flosses. There's another pocket behind here, where I've tucked some of my other patterns and my extra um, fabric for my Birdies and Berries series, because there's four in that series. And in the tutorial, this was just a plain piece of fabric creating this pocket. And I think Liz even said, you can do this pocket with vinyl as well if you wanted. So you'd have two vinyl pockets, one with a zipper, one without. But she found sometimes, especially if you have like working copies that you've printed off your computer, if they were tucked in here and this was vinyl on top, and I've seen this with the vinyl front project bags too, some of the ink will transfer over onto the vinyl. Now you can often scrape it off, clean it off, but so she decided to make hers just with a fabric pocket, not a vinyl one. I decided to put my floss organizer because I thought, well, that's just kind of wasted space in a way. So I still have the pocket, but then on the outside, instead of just having plain fabric, I put my little pockets for my floss. It up. So, so I haven't decided if I'm going to make these to put in the shop. They do take a little while by the time you cut everything and sew everything and they are a bit time consuming to make and they use a lot of resources. So I just try to find things that are useful but are fun to make. Um, the other reason I'm not sure is I, I'm, I still struggle with this type of binding where you sew it on on the inside first and then you fold it over and you sew it on the outside. So you're looking at the outside when you're sewing. So mine is still quite bumpy just because of the thickness of all these materials. But then on the inside you end up, I don't know if you can see them. So. Over here, it's on the vinyl and then it kind of disappears. That would be perfect if it was always there, but you can't see where you're going because you're sewing on the outside. Up here, it's actually on the binding. So to me, that that's not perfect. <laughs> it's not perfect enough. Um, so I may try making another one, but hand sew that binding and see how that goes and how long that takes. But, but let me know if that's something that people are interested in like full disclosure if I was going to sell this in my Etsy shop I'd probably have to list it for like 80 to 90 dollars Canadian to make it at least somewhat worthwhile for the amount of time and energy and resources to make them so yeah I'd love your feedback if you think that's something that people would be interested in if that's something you'd be interested in or um, if you think, um, people are probably just happier with, you know, regular project bags kind of thing. Um, but anyway, that is all I have to share with you, but I thought, um, I wanted to pass some of the, uh, stitchy kindness along because Barb had told me if, um, I didn't think I was going to stitch any of those charts that she sent me that I could use them for a giveaway on the channel. So I have decided that I would like to share a nook and nanook with you guys. So if you are interested in stitching this chart, leave a comment down below and in your comment include the word cozy, C-O-Z-Y. And I will enter you in a drawing for this pattern. Uh, I will ship anywhere in the world. So wherever you are, if you would like to stitch this, then feel free to leave a comment down below and use the word cozy and then I'll know that you want to be entered. Otherwise, that is it for me for this month. And uh, I will check in with you next month and we'll see how things are going. And. Um, until then, see you later. Bye.